Should we do it? Yeah. Let's I'm do it. ready. This is 177. Wait, 178. Oh, I'm getting leaf blowered. Ah. Oh. oh no. You're getting leaf blowered? No, the neighbors have fired up a leaf blower. <laughs> oh, I can't hear it. It's fine. That's your problem. Yeah. I agree with Andrew. I also can't hear it, so it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Hello? <laughs> 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 that was almost Tim Allen esque by you. That that, that was so awesome. God, this is. <laughs> All right, great. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> hello, <rolling>. hello, <laughs> and welcome to another episode of the fuck. What? <laughs> what? I, was, I, I wasn't sure if I was rolling, so it's just double. I was confirmed. Oh, ahead, you decided sorry. to say it out loud while I'm doing the intro. Well, I asked, "Am I rolling?" And then so who are you asking? On edge. I was who, just who talking out loud. Who Listen, did you okay, ask? Okay, we're not all Gavin. I have an outer monologue. I talk, talk to myself. <laughs> to talk in your is brain. Chores. Oh chores. my god! Hello and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. This is number one hundred and seventy-eight. My name is Jeff. There's a Andrew and a Gavin somewhere. Here we go. Now that was a memorable intro. I have a question <laughs> about the censorship of our podcast name. Ooh. If you're halfway through saying <laughs> Face, does yeah. it still bleep if you don't say Face? I feel like we established this on episode like two. Yeah, what? We're like two hundred in. We're almost two hundred in. What's happening? Yeah, but have we talked about like an like an intent, but it didn't get completed? I, I, yeah, I feel like we discussed this. I think if there's a breath between it, it's fine. It's not. You're saying fuck and you're saying face. You're, it's two separate <laughs> words. If you say the one breath face, that's probably going to get edited. But if you say fuck face, okay, I, that's, I'm just yeah. checking. Because because you you intended to say it there, but you didn't say face. Oh. So I don't think we covered it, but Gavin wanted to kill Andrew by strangling him from behind with a towel, <laughs> but then looking really? in a mirror, so he still made eye contact, but he felt like there'd be a degree of separation. Oh, because because eye contact was ruined. I didn't want to. I don't think I could have taken looking into your eyes while doing it. I just. Oh, but looking into your eyes through a mirror, he thinks would be fine. Yeah, it's like a separation there, a, a layer of divide. So I just to clarify, am I fighting for my life every time you're strangling me to death? Am I willingly letting no. you choke me? No, and you, you, well, you argue. You're like, please don't do this. This is gonna hurt. I know what I said yesterday. I know I told you it's not a big deal. No, but I'm. Am I trying to fight you? Up? Like obviously, I'm not gonna hurt you. But am I? Am I trying to prevent this from happening? Oh, well, I think you should. <laughs> I, I would like to. You know, I got to be honest. We we never considered it being a fight. Because <laughs> I, 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 I just want to say I've been thinking about this a little bit. I've got I got a tree trunk of a neck. OK, it's going to be a difficult job. I think you're you're greatly underestimating how much time it would take and how exhausting of a process it would be for you to physically have to do this. How were you going to do it, Gavin? You were going to use a towel, and then you were going to wrap it around a like a wooden spoon or something so you could twist? I think, yeah, because I was worried about my ability just to go with my hands. Like, I don't think I'm strong enough. I don't think I have the grip strength. Yeah, I don't think you could strangle me with your hands. So I think what I was going to do is I was going to take e either end of a towel and sort of swirl it until it's like a, you know, pool noodle-esque. And then I was going to wrap that around, right? Then get a wooden spoon and lodge that in the ends and then use the spoon as like a twisting mechanism. To sort of like crank the towel tight, if you know what I mean, while looking at you in the eyes through a mirror. Now, how do you feel about that, Andrew? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if the towel, I think the towel would provide less tension than you would think. I, oh. I think I could survive you doing that with a towel. Okay. I, I think the whole layer that none of you considered is how difficult it's going to be to strangle me. Because much yeah. like my unbreakable nose, I think that I have a very unchokable neck. I, it's a very <laughs> thick... This was something I was going to bring up. Do you think if you described Andrew the way we described Ian, people would be able to draw him unbreakable nose, tree, trek, tree trunk neck, longest back? All back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I very as soon as Jeff presented this uh, scenario, I immediately didn't think I'd be strong enough to do it with my bare hands. Yeah, and, and for, for the record, I didn't want to strangle you. I was happy to shoot you every day as opposed to strangle you 12 times. Yeah, I don't, I, the bullet would be a problem. I can't, there's nothing. <laughs> I think it would be really hard to shoot you uh, for a while. But like by month three, it's, it's like brushing your teeth probably. 
And so I think I figured you would get used to it a lot faster than you would get used to the 12 stranglings because then you have to think about it all month long. You're like, oh, God, it's is it the 20th? Oh, rent's going to be due. I got to strangle Andrew. I mean, fucking, <laughs> is it tax month? Uh, you know what I mean? Like that shit would weigh on you. No, once again, you're not factoring in my perspective of fighting this. I would get really mad and be like, I'm going to make this fucker take all day if he's going to try this all day. <laughs> Do you think you could like clench your neck muscles and really try and prevent it? Oh, I just, absolutely. I was, I was going to say, I got, I got some pretty big shoulders. I can turtle this neck. I could go to the shell to reduce the neck area, the thickness in the neck. Even if you got your hands on there, it's going to be exhausting. So do you, do you think you actually have a girthier neck? Like if we measured yes. your neck, would it be? Yeah, I think I got a girth neck. Absolutely. <laughs> I think this is something I thought about a lot. Now, if you use tools... I think you could choke me out, but I think that like if you were to put me in like uh what would be what would be uh, I'm trying to remember the name for the choke, but there's like different chokes that I think I'd be very resistant to. Artie? And I know a lot of them are are actually based on like cutting off circulation, which causes it, but I, I just think I got like a really girthy neck. Do you think if we put something constrictive around your neck and you flexed it hard enough you could snap it i don't think i could snap it but i think i could generate enough space for me to continue the blood flow as well as like gargle breathe mm. that'd be such a cool moment in a movie though if someone was in the middle of the towel slash wooden spoon choke and then they just flex their neck and the spoon exploded do you think if a boa constrictor tried to constrict your neck but you were ready for it that you could <laughs> like no prevent the answer is oh, you're okay. no because a boa constrictor their whole thing is constricting that's yeah. their life a human <laughs> generally speaking their whole thing is not strangulation so i think there's a level of fatigue that a person would face that the boa constrictor would not well the boston strangler and the hillside str there's a few there have been a few people who their whole lives was strangling yeah there's a few human constrictors yeah, but I would like to I'd like to size up the girthiness of those necks that the Boston Strangler was going after. I bet you I bet you he went for very pencil like necks. <laughs> like the idea of him just sneaking up behind you and then grabbing and just going, Oh shit. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Come on. You think the Boston Strangler is like he's like, that is not a neck. That I can't handle that neck. <laughs> no, yeah, I would I would feel fine in that environment. There's so I, many. He would have to take out 99% of the necks before he even considered going to mine. I think that's fair. Yeah. Well, I've thought about yeah. this. I've thought about this outside of this show, like outside of this conversation. I've just, that's a random thing that it's like, I should have brought up. I have a very thick neck. Your neck is still not as wide as your head, though. Well, I mean, that's fucking, that's a huge, that's a huge thing you're describing. But it's, it's, it's big enough to support his head. That's right. a great point. Yeah. Which is probably what makes it so goddamn strong and sturdy. He's got, <laughs> Andrew has got a lot of brain. <laughs> you opened a mini helmet recently in the break show, and I had the realization that any helmet to me is a mini helmet. But that's, that's, like, <laughs> that's like a baby helmet is what that actually is in the context of my head scale. I don't know what I was expecting opening up that middle, that uh, mini helmet on the break show. But uh, a very underwhelming. I won't be buying any more mini helmets. I'm definitely not a <laughs> mini helmet collector. It felt like a cheap plastic piece of crap. It was like what they serve, not even like the nachos. It's what they serve the little ice cream scoop in yeah. at a baseball game. Because we're making the nacho helmet for f face, right? And it's way nicer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're making a f face nacho helmet. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. way yeah. nicer than the one uh, that I just paid 120 bucks for or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And w maybe we'll sign some. Gavin, we made this uh, nacho helmet just in case you needed nachos. That's true. Okay. Will you sign some? Yeah. Will you All eat right. nachos out of one? Ooh. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. All right, there we go. Why wouldn't I? Okay. I? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I'm just asking. Just asking questions, man. Who do you think has the heaviest head? Do you think Andrew has the heaviest head? Oh, easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I think I have both the heaviest and the most hollow. Uh, wait, what? what? I got a lot of room in there. Um, I have a very knockable head. <laughs> but an so unbreakable wait, wait, to... nose and all back. <laughs> One day we're all going to get together. When we get together with hugs and all that, and then you guys are going to knock on my head and be like, wow, this is like, this is a dome. You got a dome in there. So you're saying you have the, the most empty head, but most massive head. Yeah, well, like, if you knock on it, it the sound travels. The acoustics in my skull are second to none. It's bouncing <laughs> off the walls. You, you're going to see. 
You'll just see you. How am I gonna see? <laughs> well, I'm saying one, one, eventually we're all gonna get together, hugs and all that. After we do all the hugs, Gavin, you can try to strangle me, and then you guys can all knock on my head like it's a door, and it will the sound, <laughs> the sound it makes. I want you to know, Andrew. I don't actually want to strangle you. You say that, but then you create a hypothetical in which you have to. I, I didn't create shit. And then you spend you spend you... all weekend. I adapted. I'm pretty sure you created that hypothetical. Yeah, and then when somebody picked the one that you didn't like that they picked, you made sure that you kept putting Modifying things on it, that yeah. one to make sure they picked the one that you wanted them to. Yeah, but my one was dogs and nosebleeds. It, uh, Jeff's one was Andrew. I don't think it. I don't. I don't remember it that way. Oh, uh, okay. Shh, okay. Oh, so right. it's Jeff. It's all kind of hazy. After you had yeah. to take a picture with your worms and dirt, it's all kind of hazy. Oh, no, this is okay. It's Jeff's fault. <laughs> Gavin, I was about to talk shit to you. I was about to say I'm going to turn your gold hands into dog shit hands after people see <laughs> your lack of strangle ability on my neck. But now it's a Jeff thing. <laughs> Dude, it's not a just, just, don't, don't listen. There's fucking three people who were there and two of us can't remember. You think the don't, guy that throws... Don't fake news me into this being <laughs> Jeff's fault. Eric and I remember it a little differently. We already established that Jeff had shitty hands last week. <laughs> I've seen, well, I haven't seen it, but I've heard Jeff throws like 25 on baseball. I'm not scared of those hands. There's no power in those hands. Fuck, 50 without training. What are you talking about? Also, also, I never want, first, for the record, I never wanted to strangle you. I wanted to shoot you. Uh, I think the strangling thing is way too personal. And uh, I would never have even attempted it. Uh, just for well, you know better. Now, You're a wise now let man. Me, now let me ask you a question. You think you have the heaviest head. Who do you think amongst us has the heaviest thoughts? Because I think it's me. <laughs> oh, it's definitely you. Yeah, you immediately yeah. came to mind. Okay, thank you. Not in the sense of like they're great thoughts, but they're, no. I think you. I think there's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of. A lot of they're they're all dark thoughts. Yeah. That sort of like they're they're like really just dark marbles inside your head that weigh so much. Yeah, it's like a War and Peace. Uh, size novel of dark thoughts that just rattle around all at all times. The weight and type of thought that makes you uh, consider either strangling or shooting one of your closest friends, those kind of heavy dark thoughts. Have you guys, do you guys have contingency plans on how to kill every, uh, all of us around you? No. What? Like, I've never thought of it. <laughs> what oh, are you really? talking about? Well, I read a, I read a Justice League comic once when I was in high school and <laughs> in it, <clears throat> they were talking about who who was like the baddest member of the Justice League, and it was determined that Batman is the most dangerous member of the Justice League, even though he doesn't have powers, because he has a contingency plan to kill every other member of the Justice League if they go evil or rogue. Like, Superman's a good guy, but if Superman goes dark, Batman has to be prepared to take him out. Same with Wonder Woman, same with Aquaman, same with everybody. So I have always thought I should probably have a contingency plan just in case things go wrong on how to get rid of everybody around me. I mean, couldn't Superman just fly through the Earth, though? Yeah, so, uh, Batman's got a contingency plan for that. Yeah, he uh, he makes his skin transparent so he can't, uh, get the uh, rays from the sun, I think, was the way he did that. Mm. <laughs> you can do Dark Knight Returns. You just build a suit out of kryptonite and just beat the shit out of them. It's true. <laughs> what would be us going, e like, what does us going evil mean in the context of the show? I don't want to find out. Because I, I, the only thing that I can immediately think of is going rogue is like maybe making other podcasts. And you got like seven of those. You're the most <laughs> rogue. I'm not going to kill anybody for making another podcast. I hope not, because you have seven of them. You have so many podcasts. I do not. I have three. That's I have your standard. I have three fucking podcasts. That's all. That's more That's than all. most people have. But yeah. I make them all with people in this podcast. Like Eric is involved with all three of them, and Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. I, you don't. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, yeah. No, we'll say yes. What? You produce them. I'm just saying. So all right is a really a one man effort. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's true. <sighs> yeah. I. That's unfair. That's unfair to Nick and Gracie and everybody involved and Kelly every, that, are, that are involved. I, I, how dare you? Yeah. It's a group effort. I'm, I'm sorry, Nick. I'm sorry about that. Andrew, how many podcasts do you have? Uh, one. Okay, cool. Just checking. Yeah. One for me. But anyway, nobody's killing anybody about making rogue podcasts. That's not yeah. what I was, I was thinking more of like you just going evil, evil, like Columbine evil, oh. you know? Jesus, Jesus Christ. what are you? What? what are you you do have for? the heaviest thoughts. What's <laughs> what wrong hell? with you? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, the fuck? You'll be 48 someday and you'll you'll accumulate your heavy thoughts too. I think the worst part, well not the worst, but I think an amusing part of that is it also shows how old Jeff is. That is such a dated shooting to reference. There's so many more relevant ones. You really <laughs> yeah, dated well, a lot, yourself there. A lot more recent. Of There's course, but that's the one recent. that imprinted on me cuz I was 
you know, in high school or whatever when that happened. It's probably also the one that imprinted on all the other bastards who tried it. That's true. I'm not going to make assumptions about them. That's fair too. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be in that space. I'm going to move on. On a slightly lighter note, uh, Gavin and I hung out this morning. We started we had a new thing. Pleasantries. Oh, now I'm hurt. We have a. We we just started a little coffee club. <laughs> we got coffee at like 9 a.m. this morning. Yeah. Okay. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> uh. You guys have been friends for like 20 years. You we would have invited you, you and coffee this morning together. You live in Canada. I've never heard Andrew say fuck you, but I think he just did. <laughs> well, no, I just like I'm happy for you guys, but you guys are best friends. You've known each other for 20 years. Oh, look at how zany we are. We're getting coffee in the morning. Dude, like, are- I I just went, I just made a solo all right podcast about how little I spend time with Gavin. I, we just got oh, lunch I heard. together, Gavin and, and Eric and I, and I realized it was the first time I'd gotten lunch with Gavin in six years. So yeah. getting coffee with Gavin is also a big fucking deal to me. I loved it. It was a bit loud in there, though. I was right, My back was to the checkout, and I... Uh, of course you did. You guys are best friends. Why wouldn't you love it? Uh, what are you talking about? This is, he this says is, he calls his best friends like it's an insult. This is the best. It's like there's venom the show. behind it. You're like, oh, we we had coffee together. Crazy, you, you know. I, I got together with one of my closest friends, and I don't know if you'll believe it. We had a good time. Who could have predicted? Say I didn't think you'd believe it. I just said on a lighter <laughs> note, it was nice to get coffee with Kevin. It is a lighter note. I'll give you that. That is correct. I'm happy. How was the coffee? Was it good? Andre? <laughs> Real fucking thrilling. Did you have a decaf? It was just no. better than Columbine, all right? It was. I'd hope so. Oh my God. There was zero talk about strangling you all coffee long, I promise. That's great. I support this. More coffee is what I say. You're making it sound like we spend so much time talking about strangling. You know what happened that we didn't address last time? Is that after Eric touched the silver and got cursed by the water um, and almost... <laughs> Almost drowned in the oh, shower. Yeah. I forgot I forgot to bring up as well that we went to the Admirals Club on the way home. <laughs> oh yeah. And Eric yeah. Eric choked on a drink of water in the middle of the Admirals Club. <laughs> what? And it that sucks. caused what? me that caused me to spit coffee. It was like right oh. as I was saying I almost spit coffee on Eric's small wife because yeah. Eric was choked. <laughs> <laughs> choking on water. It was water was trying to get me one more time before we were like really truly done with the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get up and walk away for about a minute because I yeah. couldn't I couldn't swallow the coffee that was in my mouth. It was like sputtering out, and I was like, oh my god! The second it started going down my gullet, he choked, and I was just it was locked in my mouth for like forty five seconds. We we went to the Admirals Club. Twi- like once on the way there, once on the way back, and uh, both times we ate cubes of pale cheese. And yeah. um, when I boarded with Gavin, he was group one, and I was group six, and my wife, my wife was group seven. She refused to board <laughs> with me and Gavin in group one because she thought she was going to get in trouble. <laughs> and I was like, look, look. I could I could sort you out and get you in the Admirals Club. I could bring two people in and and get this. You could board with me too. But uh, she wasn't she wasn't she confident in my ability to get her in. I mean, the first time I we did her. it, I didn't know that you could just do that. I didn't know you could board with someone from like the like a higher group or whatever. Most of the time, you can. Yeah. Uh, the first time it happened, Gavin went up to scan his pass, and it was like a sleight of hand magic trick where as he was going to scan his pass. His phone turned off. I blew it. I really, I, it I was, looked like I'd never flown before. It oh, was, that's the worst. It was, he, his phone turned off, then he turned it back on. Then he scanned, <laughs> then he had to open his ticket, but he opened his credit card. Then he had to close his credit card. Then he opened his ticket and then he scanned his ticket. And then I scanned my ticket. And then they went, wait, hang on. Gavin, that's not the right ticket. Yeah. Cause it was a connecting flight. In Dallas, yeah, and I would, I was, I, for Dallas to Key West, I was giving him the Austin to Dallas because it reset the one I opened. But then he scanned the one from Dallas to Key West, and then it flagged it because it had to print out a different ticket because he had a different seat, and it was like I tricked them into going into like boarding with Group One, and so I was like, wow, that was really cool that Kevin did that. And then the next time, the woman didn't give a fuck. 
about us boarding together whatsoever. And I went, oh, this wasn't as cool as I thought it was. I think. <laughs> yeah, they don't really care. But yeah, I had an absolute nightmare. It was like it, it vanished the second I turned the phone over. And then it was like, bloop, credit card, wrong. And then it was like, bloop, wrong ticket. I was like, shit. And I was like, bloop, wrong seat. Because I got the upgrade. So we had to print the new one. I was like, man. And, and all the people behind me, other group ones, were yeah. getting real huffy puffy. Yeah, because you're acting like a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah he, I, I, he was acting like a real group seven. That's all I'm and saying. And then I got really worried that um, Eric's small wife was watching from afar to see how it was all going. And I, I was worried that I was embarrassing myself. <laughs> the, uh, the best thing about being the group one and pulling uh, previous group or like later groups with you is that it works 95% of the time, but the 5% of the time it doesn't work. You still get the board as group one and it's just <laughs> embarrassing for them. I've never had it not work. Yeah, I've had it not work a couple times. My wife was really afraid of having it not work and having to turn around yeah. and wait for six more groups. I was so proud of her, though, when she when, when she, she finally did it. For it. Yeah. Yep. She finally did it on the last part, and she didn't think that it was possible. And she went, she just kept going, I'm going to do it. Well, uh, and, I, and I asked her after, after we were walking down the jet bridge, after we boarded, I was like, how did you feel? You know, because it worked. And she just like puffed her, puffed her arms out. <laughs> like, like she... Like she was overheated or something. Like all the nerves got to her all at once. She was like afraid. She like puffed out all big, like a like a cat fronting on someone. It was amazing. <laughs> she felt she felt big. Oh yeah. I I need to ask you, Eric. After you know, nearly dying in the shower. Yeah. And then choking uh -huh. in the Admirals Club. Have you enacted your <laughs> contingency plan against water? Because it is clearly it's gone evil <laughs> wow. against you. Yeah, I figure I'm going to strangle it by looking at it while I look at it in the mirror um, and just see how that goes. Uh, oh, the towel would actually absorb. It would be a great move. Yeah, yeah. You use the towel and it, and it absorbs all the water. And that's kind of like the same thing. You know what I mean? It's. I, I would almost say it's. It's even more uh, sinister in a sense because you're removing it. You're taking. Yeah. If you go to the sea with a towel, mm -hmm. you're absorbing it from its home, ripping it from its comfort, and right. then letting it die <laughs> out I in agree. the sun somewhere else. That's that's yeah. evil. That's uh, an evil move. Jeff, how would you kill Nick? Uh, <clears throat> probably the same way I'd kill water. It'd be sponge related in some way. <laughs> I think you think you would absorb him. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I have. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh. I think I'd probably just shoot him. Oh, a lot of people God. don't. A, a lot of people don't need a complicated contingency. Andrew does a little bit because he's devious, you know. And Gavin, you're clever, so <laughs> I, I'm not going to get into the specifics with y'all because I don't want to give you any ammunition against me. Or I don't, you know. What's the point of a contingency plan if everybody knows it, right? What's the point of being a doomsday prepper and living off the grid on your boat if if you take everybody you meet to see your doomsday prep? Come by boat? and see my boat. <laughs> I think the way they kill Nick is. Do you remember that that woman that uh, Walter White takes out like the last season of Breaking Bad by poisoning like her oh, coffee Lydia thing? with the rice? Yeah, in? yeah. Well, they put it in the, the the sugar that she pours in her coffee. Just put that in any ketchup packet within a five mile radius of Nick. Just yeah. any condiment. So ketchup instead of stevia? <laughs> yeah. I think the way to kill Nick is just to lock him in a room with too much food. Oh, that would do it. Oh, yeah, he would do it to himself. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like sloth in seven. You just yeah, like he would, he would absolutely be. Yeah, yeah he, he, would, he, can't he would be the gluttony guy. He'd be fucked. That was oh. it, gluttony, yeah. I was thinking about some of the great comedy duos of all time. You got to think about Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, a more modern all-time greats, Key and Peel, and how they were so good at setting up and then delivering the joke. And uh, now I think about it. You know what the perfect duo is when it comes to growing your own business? You and Shopify. <laughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits or in our case, grown tubes or I don't know, waffle makers, um, they are there helping you everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. 
and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. I think the thing that's so amazing about Shopify is no matter what your goals are in terms of growing your business, they can help you hit it and assist you every step of the way. You will know you're covered if you partner with Shopify or if you, you use Shopify. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash face, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash face now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash face. Cozy up in style this fall with the unmatched comfort of MeUndies. MeUndies has the softest and most breathable underwear and loungewear that I've ever experienced. You, it's great. You need it to breathe. You want it to breathe and it delivers and it's so soft. It's fantastic. Whether you're on the grind during the work week or posted up on the couch watching Mr. Belvedere catching up on all those classic episodes, MeUndies is here to keep you comfy. And they will. It's a fantastic product. They're such cozy pairs of underwear. I love them. They have style for everyone. From all black classics to fun seasonal prints and modern geometric shapes, MeUndies has a wide range of cuts that'll fit your style. It's versatile loungewear. MeUndies isn't just about underwear. Explore the lounge collection featuring cozy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. It's unmatched comfort. MeUndies' signature tense micromodal fabric is soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh-so-comfy, making it ideal for all-day wear. It is a problem-free philosophy. Not happy with your first pair of undies? It's on MeUndies. To get 25% off your first order plus free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash face. That's MeUndies.com slash face for 25% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Do you wish you could go to Willy Wonka's Candy Factory? Well, since that's not exactly possible, let me introduce you to the online version of that. Nuts.com. In addition to an amazing selection of nuts, they have tons of classic candies like butterscotch, fudge, and licorice. Honestly, nuts.com probably better. In fact, I'd say definitely better than Willy Wonka's Ch Candy Factory. I don't know why I went to say chocolate. And they make all sorts of things at Willy Wonka. But that doesn't matter because we're talking about how delicious nuts.com's products is. <laughs> I almost said nuts are delicious, which they are, but also not maybe the best combination of words. But we're going so far beyond the point. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there's something for everyone. At Nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh. Satisfaction is guaranteed. And I gotta tell you how delicious those chocolate gummy bears are that they make they're my favorite thing i think they are just so good it's hard to pick a favorite because there's so many delicious choices to choose from there is a huge variety of products on their website so i highly recommend that you check it out right now nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of 29 dollars or more at nuts.com face so go Check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash face, and you'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash face. Hey, I don't want to in further incur the wrath of Andrew, but should we mention that we hung out and did something kind of cool this weekend? No, I listen, I, I want to be clear. It's not that I had an issue with you guys hanging out. I love that. I'm excited to hear. It just sounded like there was no point to it. It was the point of the story was I had fun. So if there's something that cool that happened when you guys hung out, please. So having fun doesn't get to be a point? No. So wait, Andrew, if I just hung out with you this weekend. Yeah. If, if we just had in person, fun. But that was if it was in person, that'd be notable. Yeah. If it Why? was just us playing Halo. that Well, because we haven't, we haven't seen each other in person in like four years. Well, whose fault is that? Yours. It's just as much Aww. yours as mine. You what fucking you are getting up planes all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> whose fault is that? He's got. He's got you there. You've been on way more planes than I have in the past six years. 
I'm gonna come. I'm gonna get some monopoly money on your door this year. <laughs> this year. <laughs> There's no time. Not a lot of this year left, man. There's no. It's October. This comes out in like November. I'm gonna get it in your house. You better not fucking. You better not be in Canada during my wedding, Gavin. <laughs> you have traveled for personal reasons to places much further than it is to my place. I don't want to hear this. That is my fault. What's further than? You've been to like Japan and Italy and all these fucking. You've, you're traveling oh. all over the world. What's, oh. what's further? Oh. He immediately named places you just <laughs> went to. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about stuff for this, like what? stuff with this group. What do you mean? No, I'm I just saying know. you've taken personal trips <laughs> to further. Yeah. Listen, I'm on point today. I, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a little antagonistic <laughs> mood. This is, you're in the zone. I've had a little. You I know what like happened? This is yeah. what happened. I'm gonna tell. I was gonna tell the story before. I did something I haven't done in years, and it's made me. It's it's brought out the little antagonistic side of me. I accidentally went into a game chat uh, for the first <laughs> oh. time in probably like four years. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I like that game, and I've been trying to get achievements in it. And uh, it's a game that audio cues really help when you're playing. So sort of the goal of the game is there's a group of victims that have to try to escape. And then you have a group of killers trying to kill you and prevent you from escaping. So I was playing as a victim and I thought, oh, I, I should have some audio to this because it would make it easier. I'm trying to escape from an achievement. And uh, I put my headset on. I play like three or four games. And then in like the fifth game, all of a sudden I hear a voice and I get freaked out because I forgot like, oh, shit, I guess I'm, I'm technically in game chat. So I'm, I'm in this lobby and how it works is it, it sometimes takes like two or three minutes to find a lobby. So it's a process. Then you get into the lobby. There are two requirements for the game to start. The first is that you need seven people. You need a full lobby. The second is that you can pick a variety of killer characters, but at least one person needs to be playing as Leatherface or else it won't start. There's a timer in the top right that ticks down. And if there isn't a Leatherface or the lobby isn't full, it will kick you back to the main menu once it hits zero. So we're all in this lobby and I, I get spooked by this guy saying, hey, somebody switched to Cook on the killer side. That's one of the killers you could play. He's currently Hitchhiker. The second person is a character named Sissy, and the third is Leatherface. So he says, hey, somebody switched to Cook, and nobody does anything. And then, like, five seconds later, he says, no, come on, we, we need a, somebody go to Cook, and nobody <laughs> does anything. And then he waits a little bit more, and then he says, okay, seriously, we need, for this level, we really should have a Cook. And then the guy who's playing Leatherface switched to Cook, which now means the person who was playing Sissy would have to be Leatherface, and they just quit. They just left because of it. <laughs> and there's like 90 seconds left in this lobby, and I've listened to this whole thing, and there's a part of me that I, I, it's just, I, I think, do I want to say something to this guy? Because I'm not, I don't actually care, but I feel like if I say something, you'll probably get real heated, and that could be funny. So I think about it for a minute. And I say, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll do it. So I, I bring my headset down. I said, why'd you have to go and bully somebody to be cooked? Now we're not going to play. And the guy immediately went, mind your business. Mind your, he just kept saying, mind your business. And I said, I am minding my business. None of us are going to get the play because you had to bully somebody into being the cook. And now we don't got a leather face. There's 60 seconds left. And he kept saying, mind your business. And I said, I am. What are you talking about? You're being ridiculous. And then he said, just wait, just wait. See, you try to escape this house. And I said, nobody's escaping nothing. We're not going to get to the game. We got two people. We don't got a leather face. We're not going to go anywhere. And he just kept saying, ah, yeah, good luck. Good luck in this game. I'm going to get you ain't even going to leave the basement. And I'm, I'm yelling back at him. Nobody's going to get to the basement. We're not getting into the house. This game isn't happening because you had to decide to be your fucking like Andy Reid try to call out the offense. <laughs> This is ridiculous. What are you doing? And he's just getting more mad at me. And then because of my rally, one of the other victims put their headset in. It was like, yeah, you're a real idiot. And then he's yelling at that guy. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting him. I'm getting he's getting real mad. And we're just going back and forth. The clock hit zero. Everybody gets sent to the main menu. And I open up my recently played with and I immediately message the guy GG. And I'm laughing about it the entire time. <laughs> I turn around and I look at my partner who has been who witnessed all of this and they just immediately said, I think I know why your rep was the way it was on the 360. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I've been I'm, I, ever since that, I apologize. I'm a little antagonistic. I think it brought a fire out. But uh, tell please proceed with your story. What happened? What was the fun thing that happened when you guys got together? 
Oh, this weekend? Yeah, this weekend. Tell me all about it. Well, now I don't want to tell you because I just feel like you're going to be antagonistic and aggressive and angry. <laughs> no, I got it out of my I system. I don't know if it's cool enough. I don't know if, if it meets the uh, doesn't uh, rise to the level of Andrew's ire threshold. But we all got together on Saturday and we watched the, the solar eclipse. That's all. That's pretty. That's yeah. Okay. It was almost a total solar eclipse. We almost got a ring of fire. It was like. It was so close. It was. It was yeah, so that crazy. was pretty cool. I saw a lot of people posting about that. Yeah, yeah. that was the, the moon was like smaller than the sun, so it wasn't a proper total. But yeah, yeah it was really cool to see, and uh, it made all the shadows weird. And it just made being outside very weird. That's all. Please don't yell at me. I no. ate. <laughs> I ate so much cheese on a cheese board. It was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we had like a Eclipse Girl dinner lunch, and it was amazing. <laughs> eclipse? We had, Andrew, we had Eclipse Girl dinner lunch. <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> knows what that is. <laughs> I'm always having Eclipse Girl dinner lunch. Speaking of video games, did you guys see the big, the big news today? No. no. Oh, shit, the new trailer dropped. It is out. The trailer dropped, and it is out. Season 11 of SnowRunner just hit. I, Scandinavia, <laughs> baby. I, I There's going to be a new Burlak 6x6. It's an amphibious Russian vehicle. Oh, I'm going to tear up the countryside in it. I'm so fucking excited to play tonight. You don't even know. I mean, is Gavin going to play? You had Gavin play, right? Gavin played once. And then uh, he, uh, the little bitch bitched out every other time since. We've played like every wow. night since then. Wow. Is that why you had well, to go get coffee with him so he wouldn't call you names? He fucking literally told me the other night he had to do taxes. He was like, uh, I have to do my taxes. Like that that's is, if that's the most like, I have a headache, I have to wash my hair tonight fucking answer I've ever heard. No, it was, ta- it was tax day. Not in oh, America. Sir. What? What? Yeah, it was. The tax day yeah. in April. Yep. Uh, yeah, you, if, you, if you have an extension. Ta- the other tax day is uh, September 4th. 15th is when it was, I believe. October 16th. October 16th. Oh, shit. Did I miss a tax? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go wash my, your uh, hair. No, no, I paid mine uh, in September. I paid mine when my accountant told me to pay it. So. My, my biggest issue is actually that um, because Meg was in Japan, that's why she couldn't come to Key West, but and she came back and is very jet lagged, and because uh, she's jet lagged, I am also jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, just being in, in a bed with someone who's not asleep, it, may, it means that you're awake too. Yeah, so I'm I'm bed lagged. All kidding aside, uh, we we will be ripping up Scandinavia tonight. So if anybody wants, are you doing tonight? To, yeah, if anybody wants to play Snowrunner tonight, at I'm free tonight. Well, it, okay, it's funny because that's funny that you say that now because I've been I was trying to organize that and you just didn't you, you ignored my text. So that's funny. oh, I didn't ignore your text. I was editing a podcast and I didn't have time to respond. And then it, oh, uh, the one man effort into this sounds like sounds like you have a lot of podcasts. You were that's <laughs> my uh, that's my picture that is from the tutorial sort of. You just, under, <laughs> you just completely undercut me, Gavin. You son of a bitch. Oh, sorry. I was about to say that I saw, speaking of me being happy that you guys were online, I saw you guys playing SnowRunners, and it made me so happy. I was like, this is great. I'm so happy that Jeff's back in the games. I'm glad Gavin is into it, because uh, Jeff, I know, has been really excited and has wanted us to record a video in it. And Gavin was somebody who, who like, I had done the tutorial like a year ago. I don't really remember any of it, but I've done it at least so I can play but Gavin hadn't, and uh, I thought, oh, I'm going to try to remind Gavin to get him onto it. And the next day, you just happened to be doing it. And so I texted you about it, <laughs> and uh, then I saw you still in the game like three hours later. So I assumed that you were either playing or you just left it on. And so I asked, so how did SnowRunners go? And that the image that Gavin sent was what he replied with for how his tutorial went, which I thought was very funny. I, see, I could get him out of that. That's easy. You can get him out of that? Yeah, yeah nothing's that's, too stuck is all no, I heard about this game. No, almost nothing is too stuck. There, oh. there have been a few instances. But, uh, Gavin, how was it? How did you feel? What, what was it like playing SnowRunners with uh, uh, Antonio and, and Bernie and I? I'll be honest. It was very high pressure. Like, I was really worried I'd embarrass <laughs> yeah. myself. But everyone was very welcoming and, they, you know, giving me tips. And, like, oh, you know, winch to that tree and all, all this stuff. And I, at some point, I... Almost completed one mission. Uh, nice. That mission that you almost completed took us about another two hours the next night to complete. It was you had done a lot of work. It was tough. <laughs> uh, it had a lot. It was a lot more about the environment of Siberia than it was you. It's so funny you said that because the next <laughs> night they were so nervous. They're like, I think we blew it with Gavin. I don't think. I don't think he had fun. We're not, he's never going to play with us again. They were. You guys were both so independently nervous of playing with each other. <laughs> it's so much fun. Really fucking funny. And they had so much fun too. They're like, hey, fit right in. It was, seemed like he was enjoying it. <laughs> The only problem was we had 
really, really bad problems getting disconnected, which I had uh, I had forgotten to mention to Gavin that that sometimes can be a thing. The next night we had zero drops, but the last time we played, and Bernie just couldn't stay in all night long. It's like sometimes it's, it's works perfectly, and sometimes you're beset with tech problems. Yeah, it's a bit of a temperamental turd, but. It's really fun when you're in it. Yeah. Are you guys going to try to record a video tonight then or what? Oh, I'd like to. I texted about it. I'd love to. <laughs> oh, so this is your, your flying here. Okay. Sweet. Wait, what? Hold on. What did you say, Andrew? Remember when I texted you last night, Gavin, if you had plans the following day? Yeah. And I said, I'm free after this. Yeah. That was, I was trying to. Yeah. You didn't reply to me. No, because I was waiting on Jeff to reply. Oh, but you didn't text me till today. No, I texted you last night, and then I replied, I, I texted you in the morning. Let me let you, let you know about this feature called a group text. Oh. I, uh, I responded to you, Andrew. I said, uh, well, you can check your phone. I responded. Yeah, I'll, I'll look. I'll look at it. Cool. Can you Sweet. let us know what it says, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Give me a second. Let me, let me open it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Well, Eric, you're, you want to be here too, right? What's that? Didn't you want to watch? If there's a way to watch, I would love to watch. You'd have to, somebody would have to broadcast their screen to you and you just have to watch yeah, in easy. Discord. I mean, if that's I, a doable I can't, thing, I, I can't do that. that, but one of them probably can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I'm really excited for the response to this episode because it is so out of step with the other 170 that we've done. <laughs> this feels so terse and... Almost confrontational, but none of it is out of malice, and I'm enjoying it so much. <laughs> but I think people are going to hate it. Oh, is no. this a shit episode? No. No, 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 no. That's the thing. I don't think it's a bad episode at all, but I think there are a lot of people who don't want you guys to argue ever, and this has been, this starts with, you were going to talk about I don't. killing Andrew some more. None of it has been malicious or mean. It has just been, like, bitey in such a fun way. I take exception <laughs> to that, Eric. I think yeah, it has get been get toxic and, and yeah. mean. <laughs> and I'm angry. I, I genuinely love this podcast because the dynamic can be so rambunctious and weird and then it can be this and then we can turn on a dime and it's like none of this ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the best. <laughs> Hey, what do you think of that, Andrew? Oh, shit. It dong. Yeah, it says image 0298. It's a, you donged it. It, you yeah, it came as a dong again. Oh, that was going to be. Oh, shit. <laughs> Gavin just dropped a seven meg dong. All right, that was a big old dong. I don't know what happened That's a gold metal dong right there. Damn, oh, he's donging. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> he double donged. He doubled it. It's a reverse harem. I mean, could I take a screenshot? Will it dong that way? Is this a dong? <laughs> Boom! What do you think of that, Andrew? Oh, that's it's a nice coffee with you and Jeff. Yeah. I didn't know you took a picture of me. Jeff's wearing a bright red jacket. Um, this is oh, that's his new jacket. It is my new jacket. Oh. Is uh, this, is a, this is a coffee shop we we're supposed to do for Anmo, but we haven't done it yet. Yeah. First light. It's good. Oh, it's food. It looks, is it like a library? Don't review it on this show. It's a bookstore that has a coffee shop in it. Oh, that's awesome. That's like a wonderful, You. that's a great vibe for it. Um, The coffee looks delicious. That's great. Got myself a little yeah. cap. Nice. Not allowed to give my review on the coffee here. I have to do that elsewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Me, but yeah. It's for one of your other podcasts. <laughs> one of the seven. And Any snacks with it? What do you say, Andrew? Any snacks? I'm curious if you had snacks with your coffee. No, I thought all their snacks looked... Well, I don't want to give... I No. I guess I can't okay. say... I wasn't... Fuck it. I don't care. I, Eric can be <laughs> mad at me. I thought their snacks looked pretty shitty. I wasn't into it. Okay. Them. Oh, no. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? They had lots of books. I love that. Can I ask for an update, Andrew, on your chair? It's still a stool. Still a stool? Yeah, I'm still just living the stool lifestyle. Yeah. What if we put out to all the companies that... They, they can send you a chair, and if the chair lasts longer than a year, they get an ad read. I love it. Yeah. I think that's great. We should go with that Herman Miller chair, the really fancy like $2,000 one. Ooh. We should get them to send the... It's like supposed to be the best chair in the world. They're right? probably going to want an ad read yeah. no matter what. <laughs> yeah. that 
I was thinking more from like Staples, but yeah, you know, I like where you're like a at. DX racer or something. Staples is where I've been Whoa. going, so I don't know. If Staples is the. I think I just found the chair for Andrew. Okay. Here it is. I'll put it in the. Oh. Oh. oh it's better than a seven meg dong. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Gaming chair cockpit. Whoa. I don't know if I have the room for it that. It looks like a scorpion. It does, and it's got three monitors. Holy shit! Yeah. I just want you to have that for images later. God, oh that's my so God. cool. What the? Look at it from the back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I think I think we need to, oh, to wow. see if if uh, gaming if the gate if the gaming chair cockpit ergonomic computer mm. gaming cockpit adjustable <laughs> hanging three screen monitor with LED light headrest <laughs> lumbar support high back recliner color style one Boyati company wants to send Andrew a uh, a chair. We can test it out for one year. If if it lasts, we'll give you a hell of a ad read. That's well, that's one of those things that is very cool, probably while you're using it, and very annoying when you're shimmying around it and it's taking up yep. half of a room. I think it's one of those things that's very cool when you ask for it when you're 14, and it can't <laughs> be cool until you're about 18 and you're a senior in high school, and then your friend comes over and they're like, what the fuck is this? You're like, uh, that chair is what it was like to work at Razor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it'd be like being in a Decepticon is the way I feel in that chair. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like a Michael Bay Decepticon. Well, would you like a chair like that, Andrew? Or would that be a massive inconvenience? I don't think I have the space for that. I think it's a wonderful chair. I like the idea of this being like, the equivalent of uh, the sword in the stone, maybe, or like Cinderella's slipper, but for my ass, like the chair, <laughs> the right chair that'll fit. Anything that'll get me a new chair, I support. Because this is, I, I'm getting, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I deal with some uh, t uh, tush fatigue, some ass fatigue in this setup. Where do you feel it? Like on, just in the cheeks? Just the cheeks, yeah. I'd say after about like an hour in the chair, I gotta kind of get up and stretch out or, or lay down for a little bit, because it, it really, it, the cheek, Cheek problems are, are high in this setup. <laughs> I think you should email a bunch of companies and propose what we've just proposed. I think the angle you could take to is like, listen, I have an in incredibly long back and a very sturdy neck and head. And, and there hasn't been a chair invented that can withstand uh, me. Are you up to the task? Yeah, it can't withstand you. Are you up to the task? Is your chair How about sturdy? You guys collaborate and come up with a template that I can send, and I will send that to every chair company that I can find. What about that? A collaborative effort. Okay. Yeah. But you have to send it, whatever we give you to. Absolutely. To yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who are you going to send it to, though? Every chair company I can find. I don't know. I don't know a lot of chair companies off the top of my head, so I can't list them to you, but I will, I will do the due diligence. I will send it out. Yeah, but you can lay <laughs> down in the down. scorpion. You can lay down in the scorpion chair. <laughs> you can get rid of your bed and just sleep in the you chair. You can sleep in the scorpion chair, Andrew. Oh, oh my God. You can take a scorpion <laughs> nap. So big. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's either that. I'm just looking up cool gaming chairs. Uh, so to me... It's it's either that one or <laughs> kind of what the situation is that you're already in, which is just a thing on the ground. <laughs> you're kind of you, we got to find a middle here for you, bud. I'm yes. gonna be honest. Please, I'm be cutting honest. you off again. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah, please I apologize. Be honest. What's happening is I've I'm, I've been dealing with like a chest infection, so if I laugh really hard, I'm gonna cough up so much phlegm. So I'm trying my best not to laugh, and I feel like that is really reduced my jovialness in this episode because <laughs> you're not getting like endorphins from laughing <laughs> i think so yeah and like i'm trying to hold it back like i'm i'm smiling but i'm and i think like there are many times this episode where i typically be laughing really hard but i'm having to hold it because i don't want you guys to have to hear me coughing up a bunch of phlegm to be honest i think we've instinctually kind of picked up on that and we've been trying really hard not to be funny this episode <laughs> <laughs> you know I, make it easier i don't know what andrew looks like smiling yeah uh you also you also said that and Andrew didn't laugh, but I bet he was smiling. <laughs> I am. I'm smiling very wide right now. Do you have a good smile? No, I don't think so. Oh. Do you have Do you have a beard right now? Yeah, I have a beard. I don't okay. like my smile just, just in general. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't. 
a lot of people have, and this is a lifelong problem for me, a lot of people have a great tooth smile, you know, with the mouth open. Oh, I, I do just not. have never had the confidence or the ability to, to do that. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a lips pushed together smile. I'm a no, t no closed mouth. I think I am too. Yeah, that, me too. But I mean, when you laugh, you can't you can't laugh with your mouth shut that much. I mean, it can be done, but it's not. Yeah, yeah it's not easy. <laughs> I have enough lips to cover my teeth, right? It's never an issue. And I feel like you have an excuse though, because you had to like your jaw had to be readjusted, right? Like that's well readjust. That would be a that's a modest way of putting it. It had to yeah. be like taken apart and sliced into 30 pieces and then rebuilt Ugh. like a fucking six million dollar man. But but at least you haven't had any dental work recently, right? No, I went fucking I went to the dentist last week. It's oh, like, are you serious? Yeah. I didn't tell you guys. No, uh. Oh. Oh. But you were only there for like 10 minutes, right? Three and a half hours. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> no, not three and a half, three hours. Um <laughs> great. <laughs> right? What happened? I went to my my just my normal teeth cleaning the week the leading up to when we went to uh key west and the doctor was like the mouth doctor dentist lady she was like uh your back tooth back lower right tooth is cracked it's been cracked for a long time i've been keeping an eye on it it's sort of cracked around the filling and i think it's probably time to it's gonna crack completely pretty soon so we should probably just throw a throw a crown on there and i was like oh okay <laughs> and so Part of why I had to get home when I did was because I had uh, from QS is because at 8 a.m. the morning <laughs> after QS, I had to go to the dentist and get a crown. Oh. And so I had to go do that. And it for some reason, for some fucking reason, it took about three hours and uh, it ruined my whole day. And I have to go back next week to get the permanent crown put in. Why are they crowning a crack to just get rid of it? <laughs> That's going to be so much hassle later. That is certainly an option for you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to keep as much uh, of the teeth as I can. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it, it wasn't particularly painful or anything, uh, but it definitely took forever. And uh, I definitely got a mouthful of shots. I'm just so over even talking about it that I didn't even bring it up on the podcast last week. And I probably, I wasn't ever going to bring it up, but... Uh, yeah yeah i'm in the process of another dental thing right now it's just i i'm having trouble finding the humor in it so i'm not oh, no. not really excited to talk about it i think what's funny to me is you talked about them taking your jaw redesigning it six million dollar man style or uh, another example that comes to mind is robocop mm. both of those situations they made a vast improvement on the base human form for you, it was just like getting to normal, to average. Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. that's the worst part of that experience, which is, I'm sure, upsetting to you, but very funny that you had to go through that. <laughs> Eric just wrote normal cop, which is perfect. <laughs> I had to go through the Robocop treatment to become normal cop. Yeah. <laughs> I just to get me up to, to like, to get my face to a C, to a solid C, I had to go th do all that. Yeah. I don't think Robocop was in better condition after the surgery. He could take a bullet out of a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> he could barely fit in his own car. I mean, he essentially became a superhero. Yeah, but his face was all pasted to a robot. Would you not say the Incredible Hulk is a superhero and an upgrade? Uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but the Incredible Hulk gets to go back to being Bruce Banner whenever he calms down. Robocop doesn't get to go back to being cop. Yeah, he can't get his hand <laughs> shot back on. Yeah. Yeah, he's just constantly robo. All he can do is like constantly drive by his ex-wife's house in the second movie and creep her out. <laughs> he constantly gets taken apart by bullies. Yeah, he does. He gets he gets fucking ripped apart by fucking street thugs. Uh, are you guys gonna play that RoboCop game? Have you seen the RoboCop game? No, I haven't. No, I haven't seen it. RoboCop Rogue City. Have you you haven't heard about it? No. Mm -mm. It's an FPS game <clears throat> where you're RoboCop and you are blowing people away. You move slow like RoboCop and you just like when you shoot people, red mist like they explode. Oh, awesome. You pick them up and throw them out the window. It's really cool. Could you target a bunch of dudes dicks and blow their dicks off? I think so. I think that is a <laughs> thing you yeah. can do. There's a demo out right now, but like everything that I've seen about it is like, oh, wow, they made a RoboCop game where like. You know how in, like, the boss is, like, a slow move, you know, like, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Like, he moves slow, and he's coming after you. That's you. You're <laughs> RoboCop. You move slow, and you are relentless. It's, it looks 
awesome. If we play that, we should do a dicks only playthrough. Oh, that's such <laughs> yeah. a bad idea. Yeah. I love that. Like if you kill somebody not through their dick, it's you have to restart. <laughs> A dicks only speed run. <laughs> it's like the the rules of engagement are dicks only. Anything oh. else is like a fucking UN violation. <laughs> Maybe we we do like a submission of the best dick shots in games. Wow, there's some Ooh. great dick shots in games. Like stranglehold. We just start that doing me. dick percent runs. Yeah. <laughs> What's the dick kill in stranglehold? Uh, you could go into like bullet time and make it mm -hmm. slow motion, and you could steer the bullet into their dick and then they'd grab their crotch and be like oh and they'd fall over while holding their dick it was, was it sniper elite yeah. three yeah. where you yeah. could shoot hitler in the ball yeah shoot yeah. their balls off and make them explode yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like threw someone's eye out of the back of the head into someone's balls yeah <laughs> 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 you take out their eyeballs and then take out the other guy's regular balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea. Two balls, one kill. I was listening to a bunch of your partner's uh, smart podcast, and mm -hmm. I was kind of blown away at how few euphemisms there were during the smut. Like I was it expecting it to be like a little bit George R. R. Martin style, but it was like, Man, I took my thick dick and rammed it home through her pussy. And it's like, Jesus. Yeah. This, and it's, this, like, it's just <laughs> saying shit. Yeah. You, you want to come now from your vagina, don't you? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. It it really is like they describe it. Like they describe dicks. So they go decorated with veins. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's the grossest say. thing and I've ever heard. It's also every dick is the biggest dick ever made. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> It's like the dick was the size of a small Scandinavian town. <laughs> it's like, it's fuck. And uh, by the way, written for women by women. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> Gracie said, I question my role here more and more each episode. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking about my wife's podcast. <laughs> I'm not talking about my fiance's podcast. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about this. The thing that I found troubling with the dick as you brought up eric there's a line in the book about decorated with veins Ugh. the way the way it was phrased it was like a dick was like the 360 face plate that you could pop off the <laughs> yes! side and like yes! put a new more veiny option gross ridiculous gross yeah but what do we know we're just a bunch of dudes with uh, veiny dicks yeah i don't i don't listen i don't read books <laughs> it made me insecure about my veininess I've, it's something i've never thought about are you light on veins Do you feel under decorated i feel uh, very under decorated is it like smiling with your mouth closed is I <laughs> <laughs> now imagine if your partner uh went on a podcast and talked about it oh, but not you specifically be... just yeah. how decorated this other one is yeah oh, boy <laughs> She was telling me about ones that they want to read. And she's like, I think we're going to do like a Thanksgiving thing. And I'm like, I don't even know. Like, why would there be book porn about Thanksgiving? 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 So many stuffed euphemisms. <laughs> <laughs> they just did. They just recorded. You weren't here for it, Eric. But on uh -huh. Monday, they recorded their Halloween episode. And it was a book called Evil Boys. <laughs> <laughs> and spoiler, the evil boys have big veiny dicks. No! Oh, uh, anyway, Clutch My Pearls podcast is what yeah. it's called. Yeah, Clutch My Pearls is such a good name for a podcast. Name. Yeah. yeah, Listening to it made me realize that this is like kung fu movies for women. It is. It's like yeah. the what same. A, what a great way to put it. It's That's like, awesome. It's so, it's it's their thing, and I love that they're into it. It's not at all my thing. It doesn't necessarily fully make sense to me, the appeal of it, but hey, like the fucking enjoy it. It's just dumb, specific content for, for a very specific group. What's the equivalent with vaginas, though? Like, I feel like there's not a lot of descriptors or... It's because dudes don't write books. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> dudes don't write sex books, I should say. I just want to say that um, this group here shouldn't start making guesses at what the no. descriptors should be. No, no interest. Just, we'll leave it to the professionals. What if we all try and write a smut paragraph? No, I'm <laughs> out. Nope, I don't want anything. I'll, put the, I'll no. put the tiger bomb back on my balls. I don't want anything to do with this one. What if we write like the male equivalent of what a smut thing would be? So it would be like 50 shades of Manning and it's just all about touchdown passes. Like it's not... <laughs> Oh, this is really something. I can't believe yeah, you wouldn't read my smut. Don't want <laughs> to. <laughs> I'll read your smut, Gavin. I would gladly read your smut, Gavin. If you write it, I'll see if they'll uh, read it on their podcast. 
There you go. Yeah, can, wait, let's see if we can get oh. them to let us uh, to read a smut we write together. I don't want to write no. it. You write it. Gavin and I'll write it. Gavin and I'll write it together. Gav, you want to collaborate with me? Yeah, you want to go get a coffee? You want to go get a coffee? Let's go have a smut coffee. Now that let's go to coffee club. That's the it's coffee I want to hear about. <laughs> Terrible. I gotta say, it's been really kind of fucking, you know, they've been working on this for about three months in the background, mm -hmm. and it's been really kind of humbling to watch three people who have never worked in the entertainment industry ever mm -hmm. sit down and figure out how to do what I do for a living, start to finish in their spare time and figure it out and then launch a product and go, why is this so hard for you? And you yeah. gotta go like, <laughs> I gotta be honest, I don't know because you just made it look really fucking easy and apparently, <laughs> apparently I'm not, I'm not nearly as good at this career as I thought I was. My wife has never edited audio or video so she learned Premiere and how to oh edit in Audacity. Dude, it's fucking <laughs> wow. crazy. Your wife is a better editor a, a month in than I am after 21 years of <laughs> exact same way <laughs> <laughs> oh no the laughing and oh, no. emily is a better like <laughs> is a better howard stern a better like straight man who leads people through a podcast and which by all but also i say straight man it's not but also being very funny in the same mm -hmm. way than i than i am and i've been trying to be that person She's just naturally that person. And it's like, I, some of us have to work really fucking hard and take, <laughs> do it like 10,000, 10,000 hours. And you just pick it up and you're like, oh, I'll just do what you do better. <laughs> oh, it's Monday night. I'll just do this real quick. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we should wrap up now. I'm going to go learn how to cut hair. For 30 <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's such a good idea. Oh, you want to cut my hair? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can we do that? Can we film that? <laughs> I'm, I'm certainly down for it. You make me yeah. look like a fool. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, what if he promises to really try? I'll try super hard. And if I get it wrong, I'll apologize real sincerely. Not in baby voice. A genuine. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only way I know how to apologize. Anyway. Oh, that's a double punishment then for Gavin. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do? <sighs> it's like people are always like, yeah, I demand an apology. You go, OK. Oh, no. you say so. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, okay. Oh, well, before we uh, before we wrap up, because I know Eric wants us to wrap up. Did you guys see this bullshit? There's a new fucking apple on the market. Whoa! Why is it like a tomato? It looks like an apple orange tomato hybrid. It's called, and I I I distrust it because of how they describe it. It's a Kissabelle apple, right? And they say the kiss of nature. It's the perfect partner that links taste and well-being to offer a vitalizing and natural antidote for the contemporary life. I just want an apple. <laughs> I don't think I like that apple. That looks, uh, it looks disturbing. It's disturbing yeah. me. I don't know why. In some of the images. I don't like the way it's described at all. It bugs the shit out of me. I don't want to vitalize or have a natural antidote for the contemporary life. I'm pretty happy with my contemporary life. I don't need an antidote for it. It says, if you look at the sticker on the apple, it says, Kissabelle. I'm red inside. <laughs> yeah. I, me too. Yeah. When you <laughs> yeah, cut it open, <laughs> it kind of looks like it has leprosy, is my issue. It, yeah. It's like a leper apple, and I don't want to bite into that. I don't think yeah. I ever looked at leprosy. I'm just thinking about Looking like right now. Um, Kingdom of Heaven. There's the scene with the Edward Norton. He's like a king or whatever, and he has uh, it. Oh, God. So should we try the, this apple? Yeah. Nah, fuck him. Oh. Yeah, there you go, baby. <laughs> Would you go for a Kissabelle orange or a Kissabelle rouge? I mean, I think the rouge looks better. Although the rouge kind of looks like a butthole. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're a bit anus -y. The top one with the where you can see the seeds isn't as bad, but the bottom one, it just looks like a fucking asshole. It's pretty sphinx. I think the top one looks like if a watermelon had an anus. Jesus. Yeah. Interesting. A watermelon's anus. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this podcast is a Cosmic Chris podcast, so. Yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. We're loyal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll still try this apple, though. I bet it's... Uh... No, I, I will definitely try it, but I'm not... I'm, it's not going to compare. Yeah, I don't want... I don't know that I... I don't want to... I don't want to find out I like it better. I'm really happy liking the Cosmic Chris. Well, Bye. you can head on over to <laughs> facepod.com and you can watch face off uh if you want to check that out um yeah we got a million things for you to do now you can you can listen to this podcast you can go over you can watch our supplemental we, we typically drop a supplemental episode just about every week we got gaming two gaming videos a week mm -hmm. uh we got the break show people have been very kind about our let's play videos a lot of people mm -hmm. saying it's gone from the summer of 98 to the winter of 2012 <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a, and that's a compliment they're saying? <laughs> and I saw that someone was uh, confused about why Andrew only got to play once in the face off. And someone suggested that he should have he should have played Becca for his second round, <laughs> 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 which makes no sense, but also makes total sense. Yeah, in in our universe. And by the way, without spoiling anything, but Andrew came up with a mechanic for a new for the next season. Oh, that yeah. that makes the the ladder make more sense. It balances the teams better. But I think the way we did it makes total sense when you look at it and evaluate it. But this, I think, the new idea that Andrew came up with is going to make it. It actually makes me more excited about season two. Because yeah, we wait. get to do it. But you got to watch season one first. Otherwise, you're lost. That's true. Big matchup this week, right? You you and I, Jeff, for one people. Oh, it'll, it'll be over, I guess. Oh, it'll absolutely but, be over. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, you can but, talk about how exciting it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was real exciting. <laughs> I had hope. I had a brief moment. All I did that entire series was lose. I lost the randomizer. <laughs> I lost our game. <laughs> first one eliminated on a raft by myself for a bit. <laughs> Can I, oh, can I share quickly before we wrap up? I, I really, I f- face myself massively the other day. Just yesterday, I did this. Because we're okay. doing the video game content <clears throat> and all that stuff. And I've been having so much fun trying to come up with format ideas to just spend more time with you guys. Because I love you guys. You're, you're some of my favorite people. I just, any excuse I can have to spend more time. It's, and that's clearly evidenced by the first half of this podcast. <laughs> just, <laughs> well, let, here's the thing. Let him be nice. Let him be sincere. He was smiling. I had a big cough, okay, and I cleared some stuff out. I'm good. I'm back to myself. The The <laughs> evil is out of my body, okay? I'm, 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 I'm back to my normal, <laughs> jovial being. But I, I love you guys so much, and I love you, Jeff. And I've been looking at, we've been exploring, I have a, a place in my heart for really dumb licensed video games. I, I just think they're, especially when they bring in like the normal cast of the thing, yeah. so broken in like the best way. And I think it's so funny. And so I've been exploring those and I learned that there's a Dallas game. And I got really what? excited what? about playing the Dallas game with you. And it came out on the NES. And so I bought, I bought like a, an expensive machine that you can play NES games in HD on. And I was so fucking excited. I was like, yeah, this is perfect. We can play the Dallas game. It's called the Dallas Quest, as Eric just posted a photo of it for. So then I bought the machine. It shipped out and everything. And uh, I decided, well, now I need to buy the Dallas Quest. And so I'm looking online. It do- it didn't come out for the NES. I just invented that in my head. It what is the like. Fuck? It's like a Commodore 64 game. It's got an Atari logo on the image. Yeah, there's an Atari and like Commodore and like it's not it never released on the NES. I just for some reason in my head it had and I bought this entire console for this specific purpose. So now I'll I'll figure out something else to do with this console. But I really that's how badly I wanted to share in the Dallas experience with you, Jeff. Maybe there's like a Knots Landing or a Dynasty uh, or a Landing. Falcon Crest game we could play on your expensive emulator. It's not even an emulator. It's why it's so expensive. It like runs. You need the the cartridge, and it like runs the thing as it is intended, but in HD. Can we still play the Dallas Quest somehow? Uh, I would love to if someone could figure out a way to do that. So we need to emulate Commodore sixty four. Yeah. Yeah, either either that or Atari, probably. I'll I'll see what we can find. I'll I'll poke around. It looks great. Look at the bugle and the rifle. It looks just like Sue Ellen in that image, too. <laughs> the the what I've heard in my research of the game is that it's a really good game, but it has almost nothing to do with Dallas. <laughs> unfortunately. Well, like you start out, is it the South Fork Ranch? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you start there and then almost immediately travel to South America and it, like everything that's Dallas related gets removed. <laughs> well, now I will say in season three, they'd spend some time in South America. That's where Jock's Ooh. helicopter goes All down right. and oh. he disappears. So there, there is a tie. I was lukewarm, but now oh, I'm Oh, there's in. a rat in. <laughs> you see, small shovel, giant rat. <laughs> there's a Dallas rat? I like that where it says like, do, what do you want to do? It just says, well... <laughs> well, <laughs> I, is, I have to play this game before I die. Yeah. By the way, we're gonna by the it. way, can I just say I'm up to season seven on Dallas now? If if you guys want a current state of Dallas, uh, uh, season seven's real dog shit. Oh no! It's how many uh, seasons are there? I think there's twelve. 
Oh, oh my God. Season seven, it, we're at like 83 or 84. It just, it flips hard. It's six really, really good seasons and then a big steaming pile of shit that's season seven so far. <laughs> like, it's gone real fucking ridiculous, real fast. Just real fast. It's bad. All right, now we wrap up. I right? don't know how much longer I yeah. can. I mean, I'm going to watch the other seven, the other five seasons or whatever, but man, I may not enjoy them. Anyway, we should probably stop because I'll just talk about Dallas forever. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Fucking Ray Krebs is on trial Stop. for and then, murder. It's not fucking he about the cord on Mickey. Facepod.com slash first if you want to support the show directly. We got all the stuff there. But hey, if you're just listening to the show, that's plenty of support too. Thank you. Bobby very much. and Pamela Thank got you divorced. For listening. Miss Thank Ellie's you. off camera. Sorry really that you have to you listen to this like part of it. I apologize. Whole point. For this part. I, You've I, heard I, your I, options. She's lost yep. a goddamn well, mind because Mickey's dead. What? It's just a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I turn <laughs> off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Hey, guys. Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Remember the Sonic guys? Let's make the coolest jersey ever. Who's getting waxed? Cursive is making a comeback. John Carpenter has the right idea. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>